In this video, you are going to learn how to handle exceptions in Python like a boss. So let's get started. So I think a good starting point is just defining exceptions in general, just to make sure everyone is on the same page. So I really like this definition and it says, a person or thing that is excluded from a general statement or it does not follow a rule. So when I think of exceptions, I think about a teacher. And let's say a teacher is giving out a test and she's like, okay, you get 60 minutes for this test. However, there might be special cases, special situations. So let's say a student comes in late. How would we handle that? Or like, let's say a student needs extra time because of like a learning disability or something like that. You know, they might need more than 60 minutes. So it's kind of like those students do not follow a rule. You know, something else might apply to them. And that's also what happens in our code. So now let's talk about exceptions in Python and what are exceptions in Python. And I think tutorialspoint.com explains it beautifully. So I'm just going to read it out. So they said an exception is an event which occurs during the execution of a program that disrupts the normal flow of the program's instructions. In general, when a Python script encounters a situation that it cannot cope with, I love how they use the word cope, it raises an exception. So it really like is our code just can't cope and you're going to see like a whole bunch of red is going to be printed out on the screen and it's like our code really just does not know what to do for this situation for this exception you know they also call it like a special case and as you're going to see it's going to be a special case in our code that we need to account for so let's go through an example of this so right now I'm on repelit.com. It's totally free. So if you want to code along with me, feel free to. So what I'm going to do is print out X. And as you're going to see, this is going to be underlined. And the reason why it's underlined is because Python has no idea what X is. So if I go to run my code, you're going to see we get an error printed out on the screen. Python cannot cope with this. And it says name error. Name X is not defined. And if we go to our code, you know, we never really said what X is. You know, is X a string? Is it text? Is X a number? An int? Like, we really don't know what X is. So how would you fix this? How would you handle this? So you might just say like, oh, I just forgot to define X. X is really the number 10. You know, you go to run your code and you're like, whew, everything is good. However, is there another way that we could handle this? So now what I want to introduce is try and accept. And this is how we're going to handle exceptions, AKA errors, you can kind of think of them in our code. So I'm gonna write out the word try, put a colon, and then on the next line, everything that I want Python to try, I'm going to indent. Now I'm also going to write out the word accept. And what I'm going to do is print out a message. What I want displayed is X is not defined. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying, hey, Python, try and do this. However, if any exceptions occur while you're trying to do this, great. We have accounted for that. And you can just go to the accept and print out X is not defined. So let's run our code and see what happens. So what prints out is exactly what's in the accept. And that's because X is not defined. So if I did go to define X, what do you think will happen now? Do you think it's going to print out X? which is 10, or do you think it's gonna print out X is not defined? So if we run our code, you see it prints out 10. And that's because it goes into this try and it's like, yes, I can do everything. So since it can do everything, there's no need to handle any exceptions. It's kind of like the teacher, like, you know, all students are only gonna take 60 minutes. There's no special exemptions and that's it. So if you wanna learn more about try and accept, definitely check out W3 schools. So the example I actually gave y'all is from W3 schools. So shout out to them. And you can see that the try block lets you test a block of code for errors. 
So going back to here, you know, we were testing this out and we weren't sure, was it going to print out? Was it not going to print out? We were like, hey, can you just try this? While the accept block lets you handle the error. So it was actually over here that it's like, okay, if there's an error, if there's an exception, let's handle it. And now I actually want to show y'all a different example with try and accept. So I was actually coming up with a video for y'all and I was looking at this Wikipedia library. I just thought it was really cool. And then I ran into a situation where I needed try and accept. And I was like, oh, I should make a video about this. So yeah, so this was the exact example that inspired this whole video. So let me explain what this is doing before we introduce try and accept. So we're importing Wikipedia. Wikipedia is a library that we want to use inside of our code. So then you can see on this line, on line three, we're asking the user for input. You know, we're asking them a question. The question that we're asking them is, what would you like to look up? So the user actually, like in this console section over here, they're able to type, you know, what they want to look up. And whatever they type is stored inside search item. Search item is a variable and variables hold data, information, things like that. So then on line five, what's happening, happening is we're actually using that Wikipedia module and we're saying, hey, can I get a summary of that search item that the user types in? And we're going to save that within results and results is also a variable. It's going to store, you know, what that summary is. And then finally, what we're going to do is print out results so we can display it to the user. Okay, let's run our code. Okay, what would you like to look up? I'd like to look up the color green. Nice. Now we get a summary about the color green. Green is a color between blue and yellow and all this great information. So that is really great. And now let's look up something else. So it was able to handle that no problemo, like no problems, like it was great. So let's run our code again. Let's look up something else, maybe a person. Let's look up Harley Quinn, love her. And yeah, looked her up for no problems, a fictional character appearing in media, published by DC, perfecto. Okay, so now let's try a different example. So I'm just clearing the screen, running our code. Let's say the user was typing in something random. Let's say they really wanted to look that up or maybe their cat walked across the keyboard while they were like typing something up. Who knows? But let's say they press enter. Whoa. As you can see, a whole lot of stuff is printed on the screen. And basically, you can see it's in red and Python cannot cope. It does not know how to handle this situation. So it does not know how to handle all of those random characters typed into, you know, typed in as input. And, you know, as programmers, you know, you have to read through some of this. So I'm seeing an index error. Okay. And then you keep scrolling and then you see, oh, it looks like there is a page error. So it says Wikipedia dot exceptions dot page error, page ID, all of that <laughs> does not match any pages. Try another ID. So an exception occurred and right now our code does not handle that, but we can change that. So instead what we can do is it seems like when we search and try to get that summary, sometimes problems can occur. So let's try this, Python, try your hardest to do that. However, if there are exceptions, let's print out, hey, something is up. And let's move this print results up just so it's right next to results because that's when we get the results. And let's fix that typo, boom, okay. And something I want you to notice before I run this code again is it was a page error. So the exact name of this error was error. So that's going to turn out important later because we can actually use that to our advantage. But let's run our code. What would you like to look up? Run. Hey, something is up. So isn't that way better than all of the red that was like printed out on the screen? Like our code now knows how to handle those different special cases that might occur. So 
you know, I think we can actually make this more helpful. So remember when I was like, remember the name of the error? So we can really do something cool like this. So the exception was a, so it came from Wikipedia, dot exceptions, dot, it was a page error. So that was the page error. And let's give that little nickname because that's really long and we can just call it page error. Now, instead of printing, hey, something is up, let's actually print out this page error. And you know, so far in my tutorials, we haven't talked about this as keyword, but basically giving a nickname to something. So, you know, W3 schools, they also have like information on the as keyword. And it's like referred to the calendar module as C. So, you know, instead of saying calendar all the time, we can just call it C. But you know, it's used to create an alias. So like another word for a nickname. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about that. So now let's run our code so you can kind of see what we're doing. So let's type in random. Okay, and then it says page ID does not match any pages, try another ID. So we were actually able because, you know, we actually said, okay, this exception, if we get a page error, you want to print that out, we're able to give useful information to the user. And we didn't have to type that in ourselves. You know, that is just the page error that occurred. So I know that might be a lot, but kind of take that in. And I'll give another example as well to really like sync this in. But we're handling those special cases in our code. So let's run our code again. This time, Let's type in Love Island. Currently watching that show. I'm obsessed. Okay. So it looks like something else. There's another special case that we need to account for. So you can see this is a lot. And some of this, you know, that's appearing on the screen is not really related to what we wrote, but some of it is. And if we keep going, we see, oh, okay. So it looks like there's a wikipedia.exceptions.disambiguation error. So I guess when we typed in Love Island, that wasn't really specific enough. So it could be Love Island, Australia, Love Island, Sweden, American, you know, like there's different Love Island. So the user needed to be more specific. So, you know, printing out all this red, you know, that is really a lot. Like, I think we could do better and let's actually handle this case in our code. Okay, so there could be another exception. So let's say accept, and we can even just copy what that ambiguous error was called. Okay, so the exception is this, and we can call it as, um, ambiguous <laughs> error that's so long maybe we can call it ambig error and now if that happens if that type of error happens let's print out the ambiguous error ambiguous just means like oh you know strange or not clear <laughs> Woo. but okay let's run our code again so what would you like to look up so again, we wanna look up Love Island. And yeah, there is some red that's printed on the screen, but I think that's not really related to what our code is because it's talking about beautiful soup. And I think maybe they use beautiful soup for this module. So we can't really do anything about this, I think. But as you can see, now it actually prints out. Love Island may refer to all of these different things. So now the user could be like, okay, let me try again and type in Love Island, Australia. So let's run our code and let's actually type in Love Island, Australia. 
and we get a summary. So yeah, this is the Wikipedia module or library. I thought it was really cool. If you wanna learn more about it, definitely go to this website and you can try it out. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you just know a little bit more about how to handle exceptions in Python and how you can handle multiple exceptions as well as we did. If you like it, let me know by giving a like and also leave a comment letting me know what you liked about this tutorial. And I will see you in the next video.